So the first chapter of this section on embryonic and fetal development is going to cover um, conception. Um, so before we can uh, have an embryo to grow into a fetus, uh, we have to first start at conception. So the, one of the things that's very interesting about conception is um, how often it happens considering um, the probability of a successful conception, which is on average about 30% at best. Okay? Every time that you attempt to um, conceive or don't attempt to conceive, uh, but do conceive, the chances, the probability are about 30% at best. And the reason for that is that, that many things have to align, right? So some of the things that are um, outlined in the slide, so the sperm have to be deposited into the upper portion of the vagina. Um, the, the sperm has to pass through the cervix, which can, be, um, can happen very quickly or it can happen very slowly. Um, it has to pass through the uterus. Uh, and then it's got to get into those uterine tubes. And then it's got to swim up those uterine tubes and make it to an area of the uterine tube that's called the ampulla. And that's um, likely where we're going to find um, the egg that was recently ovulated. And of course, another part of that is that, that the um, timing of the arrival of the sperm and the arrival of the egg has to be um, matched well. Um, and really, even though, as we'll see uh, as we go through, even though there are millions of sperm per milliliter of semen that is deposited at the upper portion of the vagina, by the time we get to the actual place where conception can occur, we're, we're down to the hundreds at best. So the vast majority of sperm are never going to make it to this area where there is an opportunity for um, conception. So a little more detail on uh, what needs to happen in order to have a successful, um, a successful conception. So first of all, we actually have two, um, we've got two, two uh, gametes that need to be transported. So we just talked about um, uh, sperm transport, but the egg also has to be transported. And we talked about this a little bit in class. We talked about how the, um, the egg has to be ovulated and released at conception and really has to be caught by the oviduct since the oviduct is not physically attached to the ovary. So we have to have successful egg capture. Okay? And then once inside the tube, um, the egg, so once inside the tube, that egg is going to start traveling down the oviduct. And it travels slowly, okay? but it's going to arrive at the uterus, whether it gets fertilized or not. And it's going, to, it's going to take about three to five days for that egg to get from the point where it was released to the uterus. Okay? And if it happens to get fertilized on its way down, then it's a fertilized, um, <clears throat> it's gonna be a fertilized conceptus. Uh, or early embryo by the time it gets to the uterus. So the sperm has to reach this area, this general area called the ampulla, where fertilization um, usually occurs. Now, during conception or during an attempt at conception, <clears throat> the volume of ejaculate that's released at the upper portion of the vagina ranges from two milliliters to six milliliters. And that, um, that semen is going to have approximately anywhere from 40 to 250 million sperm per milliliter. Okay? So two to six milliliters in total and between 40 to 250 million sperm per milliliter. That's a big range. But a sperm count of less than 20 million per milliliter actually is the um, definition of low sperm count and a cause of infertility. So having 20 million sperm per milliliter is not enough to ensure that you are gonna have enough sperm at that site of potential fertilization. Now the sperm that gets deposited in that upper um, portion of the vagina 
contains both um, fluid from the uh, prostate gland and fluid from the seminal vesicles. Now they have different um, pH ranges. Uh, the prostatic fluid tends to be alkaline, seminal fluid tends to, uh, vesicle fluid tends to be acidic, and then the overall pH of semen is about um, somewhere between 7.2 and 7.8. And just to give you perspective, the pH of the vagina is 4.3. So the pH of the vagina is really quite, um, quite acidic. So that um, the pH of semen is really designed to protect um, the sperm from that acidic vaginal environment. So sperm tend to move about two to three millimeters per minute. And that may not seem very fast, but for a microscopic little thing, it's actually quite fast. So two to three um, millimeters per minute. And sperm tend to survive on average about two days, but up to potentially um, three, maybe even four days in the female body. Okay. So uh, a... Um, an attempt at a conception and a deposition of sperm in the upper vagina um, it will result in potentially sperm at the area of fertilization um, up to two to three days after, um, after the event. So after ejaculation, the sperm make it to the upper portions of the fallopian tubes between five to 20 minutes. Right, so between five to 20 minutes after ejaculation. And they're gonna kind of linger there, right? And um, if they happen to be there before the egg gets released during ovulation, that actually tends to increase the likelihood um, of a successful fertilization. Okay. Now, the, the, there's uterine contractility and contractility of the oviduct um, that actually aids in the sperm transport. So the uterus contracts and the oviducts contract, and part of that contraction is from the prostaglandins that are in semen. So that sort of helps the sperm get to where it needs to go. Okay. And then once the sperm enters the um, female reproductive system, once it enters the, the uterus and the oviduct, the, it undergoes something that we call capacitation. And capacitation is a change in the integrity of the um, glycoprotein cap over that acrosome, that um, digestive, that cap of digestive enzymes at the tip of the sperm. Okay? So capacitation really allows the sperm to be ready to release those digestive enzymes when they get to, um, get to the ova. So, so we've got these sperm, we've got uh, several sperm that have made it to this ova. And if you notice, the sperm, the dark uh, portion of the sperm is the, um, is the nucleus with the chromosomes, and then this little green cap is the acrosome with all those digestive enzymes. So capacitation allows that membrane on top of the acrosome to degrade so that the acrosome can... Um, release its enzymes. Okay. Now, obviously the goal that the sperm has is to fertilize this egg. And fertilization can be defined in, in a few ways. So you can define fertilization as the instant that the sperm and the ova fuse. Okay, that's one possible definition. Another time, another thing that, way that you can define fertilization is um, the time between fusion of the sperm and egg and basically the formation, the mingling of the chromosomes and the formation of a diploid fertilized zygote. Okay. And then another definition of fertilization can actually be um, the formation, the time between the formation of the zygote and the first mitotic division which takes about 24 hours. So there's a couple of different ways that you can define fertilization and they're all valid. Okay. So in order for this sperm to get to the point where it can fertilize this egg, uh, it has to really pass through two barriers. One barrier is called the corona radiata 
And the corona radiata are these follicular cells that have remained surrounding the oocyte when it was released from the ovary. So these, this corona radiata can actually be composed of multiple layers of cells. The other, um, the other barrier that needs to be uh, uh, addressed is this barrier called the zona pellucida. That's that gel-like uh, membrane that covers the oocyte. Now, um, you know, you, you've heard that adage, it, takes, it only takes one sperm. To, to fertilize an egg, and actually that's not true, or it only takes one sperm to get pregnant. Um, that's actually not true. It takes many sperm. So first of all, it takes at least more than 20 million per sperm per milliliter of semen. So that's a whole lot of sperm. And then once you get to the site of fertilization, it actually takes dozens, if not more, sperm releasing their acrosomal enzymes in order to burrow a hole through this corona radiata. Okay? And then once that happens, once enough of these sperm have been able to, to sort of take one for the team, right, digest through this corona radiata, then you get this one little lucky sperm uh, that manages to uh, get through that little hole that was made by all of his teammates not to use a uh, sport analogy, but why not? Um, so this little sperm uh, uses this hole that was made and it gets through and it uses its acrosomal enzymes. It doesn't waste its acrosomal enzymes on the corona radiata. It uses it to get through that zona pellucida. Okay. And once it gets through that zona pellucida, it's going to trigger uh, something called the zonal reaction. Okay. And what that means is once the, that um, sperm digests away and gets through that zona pellucida, the plasma membrane of the sperm is going to fuse with the plasma membrane of the egg. That's actually what is being shown in E. The fusion of the sperm plasma membrane with a plasma membrane of the egg. And Basically, it gets through that plasma membrane, and the um, and the the nucleus gets through. But what happens is, when that fusion occurs, you get this what we call zonal reaction, which means that the zona pellucida all of a sudden hardens and becomes impenetrable to any other sperm. And that zonal reaction, the, the hardening of the shell, uh, so to speak, the hardening of the zona pellucida, it really prevents um, the fertilization of the egg by more than one sperm. Okay. And, the, and of course, the problem that that would cause is too many chromosomes and a non-viable uh, conception. So the zonal reaction is the hardening of the zona pellucida that prevents any more sperm from being able to, to enter. So just some pretty pictures. This is obviously um, scanned from a textbook. You can um, see the embarrassing uh, seam, but it's really, they're really neat um, photos of up here on the left, we've got the ova with just, you can see the corona radiata is just millions of tiny little um, follicular cells covering the ova. And it's sitting in the fallopian tube right there. And then the larger picture, you see a better um, view of the ova, and it's being surrounded by sperm. Okay. So for all of the millions of sperm that are released in semen uh, during an ejaculation, but if you actually look at the site of fertilization, really what you end up with is about 200 to 300 sperm. So very few sperm actually make it to the site of fertilization. Um, and that is another one of these layers of selection we talked about. We talked about the layer of selection when um, the, all of the little follicles are competing to become the one follicle that gets to mature and um, be ovulated. Well, there's a huge competition among sperm to um, make it to the site of fertilization. 
and only the fittest and healthiest sperm are going to make it there. So hopefully when you get to this point of fertilization, you have the fittest and healthiest egg that's been released, and you have the fittest and healthiest sperm that are going to fertilize this egg. So just more pretty pictures. We have some pictures of the acrosomal enzymes getting digested and penetrating the sperm penetrating the egg, and then the tail detaching upon fertilization.